Good morning crafters and welcome back to my channel. I have a fun video for you today. In today's crafting adventure I have 10 creative and unique fall DIYs. In this video I have a great mix of fall DIY crafts from centerpieces, signs, and table decor. Let me show you how to make them. For today's project, you're going to need a package of the Harvest DIY words. You'll only need one and you can choose whichever one you would like to use. I think this is a really good deal for Dollar Tree. For $1.25, you get six different laser cut wood words. For today, I'm going to be using this one that says Hello Fall. I really do like the font. That's what drew me to it. And I'm going to be painting this with my Waverly Antique Wax. I really do like how this comes out. It makes uh, anything that's wood look nice and rich. If you don't have this, you can always use a dark brown paint. That will work as well. You just need to get one good coat over your Hello Fall. For your convenience, in the description box below is a detailed list of all the tools and materials I used to complete this Hello Fall leaf wall decor. Once you get a good coat on, take some paper towel and just go over it and wipe off any excess. I think that looks really pretty. I love that it kind of pulls out that wood grain. Now if that is not dark enough for you, you can always go over it a second time, but I'm really liking that. I like how it really shows the wood grain in there. So I'm going to leave it with just one coat. Now we're going to work on our leaf. Just go ahead and remove the jute cord. They make it really easy for you to remove it and then you can put it back in after it's painted. And I pulled out the different colors that I wanted to use. So we have Pure Orange by Folk Art, King's Gold by Apple Barrel, Lipstick Red by Folk Art, Nutmeg Brown by Apple Barrel, and Kelly Green by Apple Barrel. Now I want more of a wash look than a flat color, so I'm going to be adding water to each of them. I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is the yellow. You just want to mix that with the water until it gets nice and thin. You don't want it too thick. You're also going to need some paper towel. And then you can decide wherever you want to put whatever color. I'm just going to do one plank here of each color. All the colors that remind me of fall. Once you get it on, go ahead and remove any excess with a paper towel. Very pretty, lightened up the color some. I'm just going to do that to each slat with each color. Everything is nice and dry. I'm really happy with the color so far. 
Now I'm going to go in with the Waverly Antique Wax again and do some antiquing. Now again, if you don't have this, you can always use a dark brown paint. We're going to be doing the dry brush method, so that will work with paint as well. Now this is my favorite brush for using when I do dry brushing. This is an old chip brush that I picked up from Dollar Tree. Now it has some dried paint and stuff in it, which is kind of exactly what you want. You want those br bristles to be nice and jagged, used up. That gives you the best results. Tap in a small amount, tap off any excess. So you just have a little bit there on your brush. And then I'm going to start here just working my way around the edges and I'm just going to hit the edge and kind of drag forward as I work my way around. Okay, now that I've gone all the way around, now I'm going to go right in between the slats here, kind of drag up and down. I'm going to add a little bit in there as well. Okay, now I'm just going to go through and drag slightly. I don't want a lot, I just want a little. And just keep adding a small amount until you get it to look the way that you want. My leaf is all done. I'm really happy with the end result. I think it looks absolutely fabulous. All the colors are perfect for fall. I'm very happy. Now I want to put a little bow on there, so I pulled out two of the small ribbons that I found at Dollar Tree. These are in their fall section. They're both 5 eighths of an inch at 3 yards. And I picked this one. Uh, I thought it was so pretty. It has the little owl and the fall leaf on a green background. And then this one is just their plain orange burlap. You're also going to need a couple pieces of floral wire. They need to be cut about three to four inches. This is what I use. I get it from Dollar Tree. It's 26 gauge and you get 100 feet. So I have two small pieces here. You'll also need a ruler or something to measure with. Now I don't want my bow to be too terribly big. Let's see. Well, so that's about five inches across. Okay, so take your end, pull it in and make your first loop. And then pull the other side into the center. If you need to do any adjusting, you want the loops to be the same. And that looks just about right. And then once you have your two loops, you need to twist in the center and then pull another loop on either side. Come back to the center. You want your loops to be about the same size. Then trim and trim close because I'm not going to have tails. Take one of the wires, place it in the center, kind of pull to the back. I'm going to make sure you are in the center. I like to pinch right there at the base. It helps me get it nice and tight and then give it a good twist. You need that to be nice and tight so your bow doesn't come apart. Okay, 
So that's what it should look like. Trim off any excess wire. And then push any ends down flat. And you just want to separate your loops a little bit. Now we're going to move to this ribbon. I think that is so cute with the little owl. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to do uh, one loop on each side though with a center loop. A little center bump. And I want it just about the same size or slightly smaller. Decide how big you want your little center bump to be and then trim. And then take your floral wire. You want to put it through your little center bump there and do the same thing. So you want to get it nice and tight and give it a good twist. Trim any excess and fold down your ends. So there you go. So adjust your orange ribbon. You want to make sure that they're separated like that. And then adjust your little owl ribbon. We're going to glue that right down in the center. That's what your bow should look like. Now I want to place my bow right here at the base of the stem. I think that looks very festive. Now I found these. They are called wildflowers and they have them at Dollar Tree in their fall section. And I thought they were so pretty and a perfect neutral color to add just a little bit. So I'm just going to take one of the stems here and pull them off. And I think that's too long, so I'm going to trim them down. I think I'm only going to need one, and I really don't want it that long. Maybe, yeah. So I'm going to trim these down quite a bit. So I have two pieces with a flower on it and one piece of greenery. I'm going to hot glue these down here first before I place my bow. And now I want to place my bow on top of that. I think that's so adorable. I'm going to put the jute cord back on. And I like these, they have the little plastic thing, so you just push it right through the hole and then turn them. So now we have our thing to hold it. And I think I am going to add one or two more little flowers here.
so pretty, very simple. And the last thing I need to add is my Hello Fall. I'm going to be placing this right in the center in the open space. I think that's perfect. Just eye it and do your best to get it evenly placed. And there you go, we are all done. I think it came out absolutely adorable. What a fun, quick little project to do. To get started today, you're going to need a acorn wood cutout that you can pick up at Dollar Tree. And then I just taped two pieces of copy paper together, laid it down, and traced him out. Then once I had it traced out, you need to decide how you want to do your cap. Once that's determined, then you can um, make your pattern. This bottom section is going to go on what's going to cover the bottom and you need a pattern to cut it out. So I have the shape and then I've just given myself an additional half inch all the way around to make sure I have enough of the material to wrap around. And then this area we're going to treat differently. So you also need to mark that here on your wood cutout. Once you have this laid out, you can cut out your acorn and you'll also want to cut the top part off because we only need the pattern for this bottom section. I have my pattern cut out and I also removed the top piece. You can set this aside. This is our pattern for the material we're going to use to cover the base. And then this piece you want to place back over the top and draw a nice line so that you know where your material on the bottom is going to be and where your area here on the top that we're going to work on next. You just don't want to bring the material that we're going to use up here down past your line, otherwise our other material will not fit. Now to cover the top here, I want to add a lot of texture because the top part here, your cap of your acorn, always has lots of texture. So my solution to add that texture are black beans. I picked these up at Dollar Tree. This kind of brings me back to uh, my childhood. So I'm just going to be using some hot glue and I'm going to start right here along where my line is. And I'm just gonna start hot gluing my uh, little beans down. just simply gluing my beans down. Now I'm going to cover the whole cap top here but I'm not going to do the stem. So I'm going to stop it right here. I have all my beans glued on. I'm really happy with the texture. I went through wherever I had any kind of a large hole and filled it with the hot glue. Now I want to make sure that those do not come up. So I now I'm going to go over them with some Mod Podge. Now I'm going to paint over that. So it doesn't matter whether you use the gloss or the matte. I happen to be using the matte today. You just want to get a good coat over the whole top there and let it thoroughly dry. 
nice thick coating. Now you want to set this aside and let it fully dry before you move forward. While your acorn is drying, you'll need three of the tumbling tower blocks. We're going to glue these together. This is what we're going to use to stand up our acorn. And I'm going to be using the super glue wood glue. on there so kind of share this so the first two you want to glue together just like that side by side and then the third one you want to glue across the seam but you want it to be flat on one side So it looks like that. Just clean up any excess glue that comes out. Now to cover the base of our acorn, I'm going to be using the Crafter Square Faux Leather. This is their red color. This comes in a piece 11.75 inches by 20 inches. And this is what it looks like. I think that's a nice sized piece. Now here on the back, I'm going to place my little pattern down. I'm going to use a black Sharpie to outline it so I know where to cut. Get your pattern traced out on your faux leather, cut it out, and get it ready to attach to your acorn. I got my piece cut out. You can set this aside. You're also going to need a package of the Harvest DIY words. You get six in a package and you can use whichever one you like. Now I'm going to get my word painted and I'm using Folk Art Matte Twill Beige Force. <laughs> but you can use any type of beige or khaki type color that you have in your stash. Depending on what paint you're using, one to two coats should be sufficient. Everything is nice and dry. I'm starting to put a coat of paint on it and I'm using the same uh, Country Twill Beige by Folk Art. And this is why you don't want to put anything here on the bottom until you're done painting the top because you want to bring that color down. You don't want any peak of the wood to show through right through the edge and this is how you cover that up. And I went all the way around the edge. I made sure that I got that nice and covered. I did my stem and now I'm working through the center. Just kind of brush over it first. That'll get the majority. And then go back and wherever there's little holes, just kind of press down. It doesn't have to be covered perfectly. It's okay if a little bit of the black shows through. We're going to add another color on top and more texture. Then you want to let that dry and then we'll come back and add another color on top to add a little bit more texture and dimension. My paint is dry so next I'm going to work on the stem here and then we'll put uh, our final bit of texture on the top. And I'm just going to wrap the, the stem here with some jute cord. Just lay down a little bit of hot glue to get it started at the base. Wrap it back down. You can pick up anything that you might have missed when you wrapped up. Now to add a little bit more texture and dimension, I'm going to be using the Waverly Antique Wax. You don't need a lot. A very small amount will work. If you don't have this, you can always use a dark brown paint. 
get a small amount on your brush, take off any excess. We're gonna be doing the dry brush method. And with just a small amount on your brush, gently go over the textured area where the beans are. Because the beans are different heights, only the highest points are gonna pick up a little bit of this, which is gonna add so much more texture. Once you have as much down over the main part of your acorn top, then you can go around the edge and just gently brush up to add a little bit through the edge. Make sure to do this right through the front here. I absolutely love that texture. It looks just like the top of an acorn. Everything is nice and dry and I'm really happy with how my acorn cap came out. Now we're going to attach our faux leather here to the bottom. Now go ahead and place it down. Look and see if there's any place where you need to trim or adjust it right through this area. This needs to fit nice and snug. The rest is going to get wrapped around to the back, so as long as there's enough faux leather to go all the way around and wrap it, you're good. You just want to make sure this will lay nice and clean. If you have any issues, just lift it up and do a little trimming. But I think that's going to lay down just fine. I'm going to attach it using a glue stick. This is Avery. These work really well. You don't get air bubbles. It's easy to get it consistent over the whole project. It doesn't uh, glue down right away, so it gives you time if you need to move or adjust it. And once it fully dries, it gives you good adhesion. So I placed it, lifted up one side, added the glue stick. Now I'm making sure I don't have any air bubbles. And I'll do the same to the other. On the back here, you can see I have my half inch, which I need to wrap. So about every half inch, you wanna give a little nip. This will make it much easier for you to wrap it around and get it nice and smooth. Now to get this to lay down in the back, I'm going to do a combination of the glue stick and some hot glue. Just run the glue stick all the way around the edge. And then just start folding over. Do one piece at a time. And you'll see it doesn't hold well enough with just the glue stick, so you need the hot glue. I have my faux leather fully secured on the back. Look how adorable that is. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm not planning on hanging this so if you wanted to put this on a wreath or make a wall decor out of it, you could easily do that. You would just need to decide how you wanted it to hang and attach a little hanger on the back. I want this to sit by itself. 
So that's why we did this. We'll attach this once we're done getting our give thanks on. And like I said, I want mine to sit up like this, so I want the give thanks to be this way. And I like that just plain. I think it stands out nicely off of that faux leather. To attach this, I'm going to use a combination of the Crafter Square Craft Glue and the Hot Glue. Hot glue doesn't stick for long term on the faux leather. So I just want to hit a few little spots with the craft glue. You don't want too much because you don't want it to ooze out. finger over that. That way I know I won't have too much. Easy to spread it that way. And I'm just going to do a couple dots here and there of the hot glue just so it'll hold it till the other sets up. Very cute. Now so that this can stand up, I'm going to take my little blocks here and I'm going to glue them on the back so that this has a stand. You just need to decide where you can place it so that you do not see it from the front. Since I have my craft glue out, that's what I'm going to use. And again, just a couple drops of the hot glue just to hold it in place until it sets up. originally had three blocks glued. I needed to add two more so that it was sturdy enough to stand on its own. It was still kind of top heavy with only three with the beans on there. But I am so happy with the end result. This is absolutely gorgeous. You could use this on a wreath. You can uh, also, like I did, make a stand for it so that you can put it on your counter. I'm probably going to be displaying this on my mantle. You're going to need one of these carvable pumpkins that you can get at Dollar Tree. Go ahead and remove the stem. And if you have one, use a dowel rod. This will help you in painting. Just go ahead and stick it down in the center there. This is apple barrel white. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of the apple barrel khaki. And a small amount of pumpkin orange. really happy with that color. It's kind of a beige with a, just a hint of that orange in there. I'm very happy with that. The base of the pumpkin will take two to three coats to cover this orange and I like to use the dowel rod because it helps hold the pumpkin in place whether I'm doing the top here or the sides and then when I need to do the bottom I can just lift it up and then do the bottom. When I dry, I take this and stick it into a heavy vase and let it dry upside down like that.
You want to go through and get on one nice good coat, let that fully dry, and then go back and put a second coat. And if you need to, once that dries, if you can still see that bright orange underneath, go back with a third coat. It all depends on what type of paint that you're using, how many coats you'll need to put on to cover this orange. My two coats on my pumpkin are nice and dry. I got good coverage with just two coats. So I'm happy with this. Now I want to go in and add some dimension. I want to add a little bit of detail to these indentations so that it looks a little bit more three-dimensional and it's not just one solid color. So to do that, I pulled out the same pumpkin orange, the same khaki that I mixed in for the base color, and then I've also added some nutmeg brown. And you, you want to make sure your brush is completely dry. So to start off with, I'm going to do a little bit of the orange. So just dab a little bit in and dab it off. And then I'm going to go, just go over the whole base of the pumpkin. I want to add a little bit of this bright orange. And I'm just going to go through slightly and just brush through. And see, I'm getting a small amount of paint on there. So you want to make sure you're taking any excess paint off and just don't be afraid just lightly go over we're going to be adding some other colors so if something gets too dark or too heavy and you don't like it that's okay you can cover it up when we go over it with some of the other colors Okay, I'm happy with that color. So I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to do the khaki now and do the same technique. Once I'm done with that, then I'll go in with a little bit with the dark brown. That look pretty. I just love that. And now I'm going to move to a smaller brush. I want to do a little bit more detailed work. And this is a nice stiff brush so I can use it for dry brushing. And now I'm going to go into this dark brown. Again, dab it off so you only have a small amount. And then I'm going to take this and I'm just going to run right through those indentations from the top to the bottom. And I don't have to get the paint all the way on. Now that I've got that in, I want to blend that in a little bit more. So I'm going to go back with some more khaki and my big brush and then just go over those lines a little bit and soften them up. Go in and play with your pumpkin, find your colors, start layering them and just add a little bit at a time. And there you go. I really like that. I like the texture that it gives and it makes it look a little bit more three-dimensional and those indentations stand out much better. I'm very happy with that. You're also going to need some of the Spanish moss that you can get from Dollar Tree and you'll also need one of these plastic plates. They also come from Dollar Tree. They come in a package of eight and these are like small dessert plates. They don't give the size, but you get eight. You only need one. Moss you have, it doesn't have to be this one, but I do like this one because it pulls out more in strips rather than in big clumps. So that will work really well for what we're doing today. Now on our plate, we want to glue down some moss right around the edge of the ring. Looks 
like that. Then we're going to take our pumpkin and we're going to glue the bottom right into the center there. This is why we didn't put any moss in the center so that our pumpkin sits nice and flat. Okay, we're going to add a little bit of moss right around the top here as well. You want to make sure that you still have access to the hole here in the center. But just kind of right around the edge here, you want to add some moss. You don't need a lot, just a little. Now that I have my moss on, I'm going to do a little bit of trimming so that I can control all this wildness. I don't want it to be too perfect, but I don't need these really long pieces coming off. Looking good so far. Next, you're going to need some floral tape. You can also pick this up at Dollar Tree. And then you're going to need some floral picks. Now these two I picked up from Dollar Tree this year in their fall section. I think they're very pretty. They have that really beautiful sunflower, uh, a smaller sunflower, looks like a little mum or carnation, and this pretty gourd. I have two of those, and those came from the Crafter Square section in, their, in fall. And then these two, uh, I lucked out, I found these two at Walmart this year. They were actually leftovers from last year and they were on clearance. And I got those for 50 cents each. So you can use whatever picks that you want. I'm gonna mix these two. And then I'm gonna fill in just a little bit with this one. And this is a hop bush. This I got from Dollar Tree. Now this part here, the berries, is too long. I don't want it that high. I still want to use it, but I don't need it that high. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those as low as I can so I have stem to work with. The rest of the picks are perfect just the way they are. Okay, so, and don't worry, you can completely arrange these once we get everything together. So you want to take your two, two picks and put them back to back. And then you take, uh, I'm taking one of the Dollar Tree picks, placing it on this side, and then taking the, uh, the other one and placing it on the other side, okay? Now I can take these guys and these guys, and I'm going to hot glue those in after I get this together. So you want to pull all of your stems together. You want them all the same size, same length, so they're even. And then you're going to wrap that with the floral tape. And don't worry how they look, just work on getting it nice and snug. You can always adjust afterwards. Now this doesn't stick to the stem, but it will stick to itself. So when you initially start it, you have to wrap it around itself a couple times. The hardest part is getting it going. And then just wrap down and then wrap up all the way up to the top to where the leaves and the flowers start. Now this is a great technique to wrap your florals together, especially if you want to attach them maybe to a wreath. Uh, it's very popular to have the really thin, round, metal wreath forms that you attach florals and things to. This is a good way to get your florals together, arrange them the way you want, and then attach the whole bundle to the wreath form. Makes it much easier and cleaner to work with. Okay, so I'm all the way up at the top here. Cut a piece off. Now to keep that so it doesn't come unraveled, I'm going to hit the end with just a little bit 
of hot glue and glue it down. Okay, you can see my stem is nicely wrapped. Okay, now you know what the hole is for. You just take your little stem there and stick it right down in the hole. All the way down. Doesn't that look pretty? And you haven't even adjusted it yet. Now from this point, you just wanna adjust your florals and then you can glue in your berries and a couple pieces of my greenery here. Okay, so once you decide where you want to place these, just add a little bit of hot glue and then feed it into the arrangement. Now, if you're going to do it around the edge, you'll want to make sure that you kind of get it into the hole or you can actually just poke it right into the pumpkin. Remember, your florals are bendable. So feel free to bend them to go in the direction that you want them to. Okay. And there you go. We are all done. I think it came out absolutely gorgeous. And this project only costs about seven or eight dollars to make. Absolutely gorgeous. A perfect fall centerpiece for your table for Thanksgiving. For this craft, you're going to need four of these wood pallets that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. They need to all be the same size. You're also going to need some paint. I pulled out Burnt Umber, Holly Branch, and Cardinal Crimson. You're also going to need some water and a paintbrush. You're also going to need some paper towel. I have a little bit of each of the colors down. I'm going to start here with the red and add some water. I want to use this like a stain. So I'm going to make it very thin. I'm going to take that and just brush it over one of the slats here. Take your paper towel and then go over and wipe off any excess. So then this one will be brown, the next one will be green, and then I'll do another red one. If you get a little too much on, just add some water, let it sit for a minute, and then wipe that off. That'll help lift up some of the paint. So we are going to attach all of the slats together side by side like this. So you need to work through all of the slats and do your colors. So line it up. This is the third one. You want to do all one color and then go back, change to another color. That way you don't have to wash out your brush all the time. Now I'm going through and doing the green. And I'm applying it the same way, just put it down real quick and then wipe off any excess. I'm 
When you get done with the green, then you'll want to go and do your brown. I'm going to get all of my slats stained, and when they're dry, I will come back and we will move forward. All my slats are done and dry. They're a little too bright for me. So I'm going to go over them with some Waverly Antique Wax. I really do like this stuff. It's really easy to work with. And this is my favorite brush for dry brushing. You want a completely dry brush and if it's broken up and uneven, maybe has a little dried paint in there, that's even better. So just dab a small amount onto your brush, remove any excess, and then just quickly go through and drag through to get the majority of that paint off. Then you can go back and kind of hit it a little bit stronger, maybe around the edges, go through the center again. But just work with it until you get it the way that you like it. You can always add more, so start with less. All of my slats have been antiqued. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Now I have these DIY stickers that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. And so I took out four of the leaves. I went over them with the Waverly Antique Wax. I'm really happy with how they turned out. Now you're going to need um, four letters that spell out fall. I picked these up from Walmart. I believe they were like $1.47 a piece and these are wrapped in burlap. They come individually wrapped in plastic just like that. Now I'm going to spell out the word fall and I'm going to place my letters on here before I attach all of my um, slats here together. And I'm also going to use this slat as my line so that I get all my letters placed properly. I'm just going to eye it side by side. To attach my letters, I'm going to use some wood glue and some hot glue. Now the reason why I like to use both hot glue and the wood glue is the hot glue is going to give you that fast immediate hold and the wood glue is going to give you that long-term hold. Hot glue doesn't seem to like to stick to freshly painted surfaces too well so that's why I like to use a combination. Just like that going to go ahead and place the rest of my letters. I have all my letters on, so now I'm going to attach these together. Okay, so to attach these together, I'm going to line them up. You want to make sure they're facing the correct way. Put these slats here, I'm going to line those up. First, I'm going to hit right here a little bit of hot glue so it'll hold it in place for me. And then to secure those together, I'm going to use a popsicle stick on either side and glue them down like that. And I'm going to use a mixture of the wood glue and the hot glue for that. You're going to want to put one on each side and one in between each of the palette. Okay, I have everything nice and secure and attached. I think that looks really cute. Now I'm going to add my leaves. You just kind of play with them at first until you decide exactly where you want to place them. I think that looks absolutely adorable. Now to hang our sign, I have some beaded garland. Dollar Tree does carry beaded garland now if you can find it. If not, um, I did purchase my beads from Amazon.com. They have a large selection of mixed beads. You get a thousand and it's like $16. 
So that's what I've been working with. And this bead is about a half inch in diameter. So I've gone ahead and strung it and left some string. I tied a nice big knot so that they can't come off. I'm going to hang them from the top here and then just hot glue the jute cord on. You want that glue to fully sit up before you try to hang it. I have the hanger on. I'm very pleased with how it came out. It's nice and sturdy and it holds the sign perfectly. Now I did go in and do one more detail here on the leaves. I used a fine point black sharpie and I went in and I did a little bit of detail there and added some veining. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up or not. But I really like that. It added just that little bit of something, something that it needed. To get started, you're going to need one of these carvable pumpkins that you can get at Dollar Tree. And if you have one, a dowel rod or something that's long, this just makes it easier for you to paint your pumpkin. You can go ahead and remove the stem. And then right in the center there, go ahead and punch a hole so you can put your dowel rod in. Now I'm going to paint this pumpkin. Uh, I'm going to mix white and I'm going to put just a little bit of the khaki because I don't want it stark white. I want it a little bit more cream in color. I'm happy with that color. It's a nice creamy color. Now the pumpkin will take two to three coats to cover the bright orange color. As you can see, you're going to need more than one coat, usually two, sometimes three, depending on what paint that you're using. Okay, I have two coats on the base of my pumpkin and I'm really happy with it. I got nice coverage off of it. And now we're going to take this plain pumpkin and make it look really pretty. Now there are several different choices that you can use. These are the rub-on transfers that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. They have several to choose from, both for fall and Halloween, so either way you want to go. I really like this one. I think this one would work really well. Then they also have this one, which I think is really pretty. With all those little pumpkins. And then uh, for Halloween, they have this one. And this one, and this one. So any of these would do, and if you were going to do the Halloween ones, instead of painting the pumpkin kind of an off-white, I would do more of a gray. And the one that I'm going to do today is for fall, and this is the one I'm using. Now I cut one out because I wanted to try and make sure that it worked properly on the pumpkin. And it did, it came out beautifully, but it does take a little bit of patience to get these on there, especially when you're not on a really hard and smooth surface. Now I just use a craft stick, and then you wanna choose your design and cut out that design by itself. It'll make it much easier to place it and get it properly down and onto the pumpkin. Okay, so this is the next one that I'm going to place, and I really like this one. Um, it's going to be one of my focal points. Now, if you haven't used these in the past, 
the images are on a clear sheet and this sheet is sticky and that is placed on a white kind of slippery background so if you pull something off and go to place it and change your mind it's okay you can put it back on here and use it again later as long as you haven't rubbed it off so you need to find your placement of where you want to put your little decal and I want mine kind of centered here on this big little bump so once you have your placement peel it off place the sticky side down now it will somewhat hold but it's not going to hold really well because it is a soft pumpkin and it's not flat so you want to place it and then start at the bottom you want to work on the highest point since this isn't flat hold it down and then take and gently brush back and forth over the image you don't want to press too hard because you don't want an indentation in your pumpkin and you can tell once it's released it gets lighter in color and you can see the plastic lift up Okay, so start in the center and work your way out. And like I said, just be patient with it. If you try to rush this process, you're not going to be happy with the results. So you want to go down the center and then do one full side till it's released and then go to the other side or you could do top and bottom whatever works best And there you go. Doesn't that look beautiful? I think they work very well. I'm going to go ahead and place the rest of my rub-ons on my pumpkin and then I'll come back and show you what the next step is. Now you just want to be careful not to place it too low or too high because we are going to be putting some decorations here on the top as, long, as well as a stem. So just keep that in mind. Plus when it's placed, if it's too low, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay? I got all my rub-ons on. I'm really happy with the result. I absolutely love these. That was so much fun and they were easy to remove. Now I used everything on the sheet except this one fall. It came with two falls so I only wanted to use one but I used everything else. So it says hello autumn there, it says fall on that side but isn't that absolutely adorable? Okay, a few tips about placing these. You want to place your largest images first. Place them evenly over the pumpkin or if you just want to do one area, place those first. Then go in and start placing your smaller items. And then what I did with just the last few leaves was I did come down a little further on the bottom in a few places and I did come up a little higher in a few places. So it doesn't look like everything is just in the center. But I am super pleased and I have to tell you, I highly recommend these rub-on transfers. Absolutely wonderful to work with. And now the next step is I want to make sure that this is sealed and that they stay on. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the entire pumpkin with Mod Podge. Now it's your choice. They have Mod Podge in gloss. They also have it in matte. I actually want a little bit of a shiny finish on my pumpkin, so I'm going to be using the gloss. And you can use a dowel rod again to help you. And 
And then just go over your entire pumpkin and give it one good coat of Mod Podge. My pumpkin is all dry. I love it. It came out perfect. I'm really happy. It has that little bit of shine on there that I wanted. And everything is nice and sealed. I don't have to worry about anything peeling up or peeling off. Now for my stem here, I have a package of the little wood pieces that you can get from Dollar Tree. You can also go into your backyard and cut a piece of stem or the next time you trim your trees or your bushes, if you see any good pieces, trim them and keep them. Now I already have a hole started there. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to push and twist as I push just till it goes through like that so just barely twist don't push too hard you don't want it to break a hole now I want to add some decorations up on the top here so I pulled out these really cute berry picks that Dollar Tree is now carrying this is a smaller package you get 36 in this one and then I also pulled out a package of their burlap leaves now of course this leaf is too large but I'm going to cut it down to fit the size of pumpkin. So I'm going to pull one out. You want to go ahead and keep the little wire piece. We're going to be using this. So take that off your leaf. Now on this one, I'm just going to go and cut a couple leaves that are the size that I want. I have two little leaves. And then on this guy, just kind of grab it in the middle, grab a pencil, anything that's circular and wrap it around. a little tendril and wrap the other side a little tendril for your pumpkin And then I'm just going to pull out about three of these. I think that's all I'm going to need. I don't need the wire to be too long. Okay, so I am going to add some glue around the base here to make sure that my stem is nice and secure. Now, this is Spanish moss. I got this from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add a little bit of this on the top as well. You can use whatever moss you have on hand. It doesn't have to be this kind. I just kind of like this look. And I just want to put a little bit around the top here. you go and take your scissors and just do a little trimming it's okay if some stick out but you don't want them sticking out too long or too far so just give it a little haircut make it look pretty I like that and now I'm gonna go and glue in my little leaves here And now I'm going to take some of these little orange berries and they're on a wire. So I'm just going to use that wire and I'm just going to push them in where I want them. 
That's the one good thing about a styrofoam pumpkin. I have my little berries in. I think they look really cute. Now the little wire from the burlap leaf. I did go ahead and twist. Now I was initially planning on just bending it in half, but it's not quite long enough. So I pulled another wire and made a second one. So I have two. And because they are wire, I can just poke it into the pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and place my two little tendrils. You can bend them however you like. I put one on either side of the pumpkin. Now I found this ribbon at the Dollar Tree. I absolutely love it. It's a burlap ribbon and it has really pretty uh, different colored leaves on there and it does have a little bit of glitter. The ribbon is also trimmed just a little bit in gold. I just made a cute little tiny bow and tied it in the center with some jute cord. And then I also made a cute little jute cord bow. So I'm going to glue the jute cord bow on first. Add a good dollop of hot glue there. And then I'm just going to hot glue it right to the stem of the pump. Okay, so I have my jute cord bow on there. And now I'm gonna take my little ribbon bow and I'm gonna glue that right on the top. You're also going to need a plastic plate. You can get these at Dollar Tree over in their catering section. And you get eight in a package. You only need one. Now I'm going to take some more of the Spanish moss and I'm going to line the dish right around the edge here with the Spanish moss. And I'm simply going to hot glue it down. Okay, now we're going to put our pumpkin in our little nest. I think that's what it looks like to me. I'm just going to add a good amount of hot glue here on the bottom. Now the reason why I put the, the plates on the bottom of the pumpkins like this, especially if they have a lot of florals and things on the top, is because this makes it more bottom heavy and it also gives it a wider stance. Then go ahead and place your pumpkin. And there you go. Isn't that absolutely adorable? Another beautiful pumpkin centerpiece. You can also use it on your side table or mantle. For today's craft, you're going to need a package of the Crafter Square wood planks. They come in a package of six. You will only need three. And these are 7.1 inches by 2.8 inches. They are located in the crafter square section. You're also going to need one large craft stick that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. Now on one slat, you're going to need to cut that in half or thirds. Now I have this left over from a previous project. The best way to cut these in half is to use your utility knife and a ruler and you can score over it several times on one side, turn it over and do the same thing on the other until it gets loose enough that you can just snap the two apart and then you just take the end where you cut it and sandpaper it. So you'll need three pieces and a craft stick for our project today. You're also going to need some fall decorative paper. Now I was really surprised when I went through my stash, I didn't have anything for fall. Out of all the stacks and books of paper, I have nothing for fall. So I had to run to Hobby Lobby. And of course, this is all that I went for. This is not all that I came home with. 
But they have several different patterns to choose from. And these are the smaller sheets of paper and they were 59 cents each. So I picked out three that went together very well. Now each paper is going to cover one of these. So that's how I'm going to lay them out. I have all my paper cut to fit my planks. Next, you're going to want to take one of the uh, large craft sticks, good pair of scissors, and you want to cut uh, it into three pieces and vary the length and size of the pieces. Just like that. I have some burnt umber out here on my palette. And I have my craft stick that I cut up and my three pieces of wood plank. I'm going to start here uh, painting these. You want to get a good coat on both sides of these. So I'll let those dry and then I'll flip them over and put another coat on the other side. And now for these, I want to um, stain the back and I want to get the sides here. I'm not going to do the side where I'm going to put the paper, but I want the sides and the back to be finished. I will go right around the edge to make sure that none of that light color wood shows. To do that, I'm just going to add some water and thin out my paint. Just put a little water in there. Just make sure you get the two mixed together good. So get a good coat on there. You'll need some paper towel and then just wipe off any excess. So you want to do the back, all the little ends, and then just kind of right around the edge to make sure that none of that light wood shows, just like that. You want to do this to all three pieces and then let them fully dry before we move on to the next section. Now doesn't that look beautiful? It brings out the wood grain and makes it look so high end. You're also going to need one of the Harvest DIY words. They come in a package of six. I absolutely love this package. It has given me so many ideas for DIYs. The one that we're going to be using today is Hello Autumn. Now here in the area where I had my dark brown paint, I'm going to add some pumpkin orange. I don't want it to be this bright. I want it to be a kind of a darker, a little bit more rustic orange so that it matches the paper better. So I'm going to add my orange and then mix it with the darker paint until I get the color that I'm looking for. I like that much better. It's not so bright. I think that will be very pretty. So I'm going to put one good coat here on my Hello Autumn. Absolutely love that color. All my planks are nice and dry. I'm ready to attach my paper and I'm going to be using just the matte Mod Podge. I'm only going to be putting this on the underneath so it doesn't matter if you use matte or if you use gloss. This little scraper tool that I picked up from Dollar Tree works really well to help you remove any air bubbles. Just start from the center and pull outward. Don't push too hard. You don't want to tear your paper. Now you can use all different kinds of paper. I have even used wrapping paper for this. But the thinner the paper, the more gentle you have to be and the higher chance that you might end up with air bubbles. 
but this uh, craft paper that you can uh, either get in the books or that you can pick up from Hobby Lobby or Michaels uh, is really good. It usually, I don't have any issues of it developing any bubbles. I'm going to let that completely dry and then once it's dry we can clean up any edges with some sandpaper to give it a really nice crisp look. Now my paper is nice and dry. You'll need a sanding block or a piece of sandpaper. Now to clean up the edges you want to start by going straight down all the way around. If you have any hangover of paper this will bring it down. Once you've done that, to remove any excess paper, then you can go back and forth. If you start off by going back and forth, you have a good chance of tearing your paper. So go all the way around each piece, whether there's a hang off or not, going down to clean it up. And then go back and forth. And then that gives you a really beautiful, clean edge all the way around on your piece. So I have all three of my pieces nice and cleaned up. And now we're going to go ahead and add these as our stems. Now, of course, you want to glue, if it has a round end on it down, you want the flat end to come up. And then you just need to decide how tall or short you want your stem. Now we are going to be adding a little twine bow up there, so keep that in mind. You need to make sure your stem's long enough that you still see it once you add the little twine bow. But I like that. I think that looks really cute. And we're just going to attach that on the back with glue. And I'm going to do a combination of the wood glue and hot glue. I have all my stems attached. Now these two pumpkins are the ones that I want to have up front. And they're going to be flush with each other like this. So I'm going to attach them on the back. I cut a piece of the craft stick so it will fit there to help give it support. But first I'm going to add a little bit of the wood glue. I don't want to use too much but I do want to have a seal in between the two of them. Now I have my two pumpkins for the front secured together. I'm really happy. They're nice and sturdy. Now our third pumpkin is going to go in the back here. And you just need to decide how tall and where you want it. I kind of want it in the middle like that. So here on the back, once you decide the placement, you just want to draw a line so that you know how high you want to glue your third pumpkin. And then to help this glue down, because this is lifted, this is lifted, you need to add a couple more popsicle sticks. So I'm going to glue one down here and one here. And I'm going to start them right here at the line where I marked where I'm going to glue this down. Then my third pumpkin will glue to these popsicle sticks and then it'll be nice and secure in the back. That'll also give a little space between the two pumpkins in the front and the pumpkin in the back. And I'm going to do the wood glue and hot glue just like I did before. Oh, I think that looks so festive. I'm really happy with the results so far. So I made a couple little twine bows. They're very basic, just like you would tie a, a bow on your shoelace. So I made one small one for each of the pumpkins. And I'm just going to glue them right here at the top, at the base of their stem. I love it. I think that looks so adorable. 
So my Hello Autumn has dried and I placed it here on the front and I do like the color. I think it goes well with it, but it doesn't have enough pop for me. So I decided I'm going to do a little dry brushing with the Burnt Umber to get it a little bit darker and make it pop a little bit more off our pumpkins. Now I have my handy dandy little chip brush here that I picked up from Dollar Tree. This is my favorite brush to use. And you only need a very small amount. Just dab in, dab off any excess. And you want to go in the same direction, either go across or go up and down. I think I'm going to go up and down and just gently drag back and forth. It'll add a small amount at a time. And then you can just keep adding until you're happy with the design and how much is on there. Now I like that much better. Now you're going to need a couple of these small craft blocks that you can pick up from Dollar Tree. You want to glue one down in each corner. I used a combination of the wood glue and hot glue. That's what's going to stand up our cute little design. Now once this is fully dry and set up, I can go back and stain these pieces to match the back if I need to. But I think that looks absolutely adorable. And the final item that we're going to add is our little Hello Autumn. You just need to decide where you'd like to place it. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of the hot glue and some of the wood glue. And there you go, we are all done. I'm really happy with the end result. I think all the colors of the paper go very well together. Now the finished product is a nice size. It's about five and three fourths inches wide and it is about nine and a half inches tall. So the first thing that you're going to need is one of these styrofoam pumpkins that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. You wanna go ahead and remove the stem. Sometimes the toothpick comes with it, sometimes it doesn't, but you want to go ahead and remove that. You're also going to need a piece of wood stem. Now you can buy a little package of these from the Dollar Tree or you can go out in your yard and cut a piece of wood. You want to use this for the stem. Now if you don't have anything in your yard to cut and you can't find these, you can also use cinnamon stick for the stem. Place the stem on the top and then go ahead and take a pencil and draw a line around it so you know how big it is. Then you want to use a pencil or a dowel rod or something long and strong and then you're going to go ahead and make a hole as big as that stem. Actually you want to go a little bit larger because you're going to be stuffing the fabric in there as well. So I just go punch it in and then slowly work my way around the circle and take a small amount at a time so I don't break the pumpkin. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just be cautious not to go too large. So it looks like that. Okay, then you're going to need a fat quarter of whatever fabric that you would like. I'm going to be using this fabric. I picked this up from Walmart. It was $1.47 and it's a, a seasonal fall quarter. Then you want to go ahead and turn your fabric over so that the nice side is face down. Go ahead and put your pumpkin in the middle. Grab corner to corner, make sure that you're there. Okay, and then go ahead and take that one corner and stuff it in the hole. 
And then you want to grab a piece from the side, lift up and pull to the hole. Now you're going to see some pleats. That's okay. That's kind of what you want. Again, lift up and pull to the center and tuck in and just slowly work your way around the pumpkin and pull up and fold and tuck in. See, so you're going to get these pleats, which only makes it look more like a pumpkin. Now, when you're picking your pattern of your fabric, you want to pick something that doesn't have a right side, meaning you don't have pictures of turkeys because on this side, they'll be right side up and on this side, they'll be upside down. So you want to pick something that it doesn't matter which direction it is, that it's all good. Okay, so you can go ahead and play with that for a little bit if you want. If you didn't like the way that it came out, you need to pull in. The more fabric if it's not tight enough for you and you can also use your dowel rod if it starts to get hard to push in the fabric that will also help you okay then you're going to need a couple leaves uh, i just grabbed uh, several different colors depending on what i have and if they have a little stem on them that's good that way you won't have to glue them and then just decide what ones you like for your pumpkin and how you like to decorate Okay, so then you just take little stems and put them so that they're in the center and then you want to take your wood stem and push in and you just need to twist a little bit and push. You need to be gentle just until it gets in. If you push the leaves in too far, just pull them out a little bit. Of course, you can glue them down if you want. Okay. And then you're going to need a little bit of jute cord. We're going to make a little jute bow. So I leave one end out and then I wrap it around my three fingers loosely and I go about five times. And I end on the opposite side and I cut another piece pull that off pinch it in the middle and then just wrap that other piece around like two or three times and then tie a knot now it's up to you um, you can either tie the bow on or you can hot glue it. I'm going to hot glue it to the stem. I just add a little bit of hot glue to the back. And put it right on the stem. And there you go. Quick, easy, and adorable. I also went ahead and did this one. But see, it looks really cute when the pattern can go either way. Okay, you're going to need uh, three pumpkins to do our stacked pumpkins. You're going to need one of these pumpkins that has the three dimensional. You'll need one plain pumpkin. And then you'll need one of these signs. Now on these two pumpkins, they did use hot glue to um, attach the bows and the little leaf. Just get off as much as you can. If you can't get it all off, that's okay. We're gonna be putting another bow up here. And down here, the other pumpkin will be covering this. So on this pumpkin, to prep it, you're gonna wanna go ahead and sand off all of that glitter and try to remove as much of the glue as you can. If you can't get it all off, that's okay. We are going to be covering it. So I just take my sandpaper and I go in circles and get all that glitter off. So 
The pumpkins are all prepared and ready to go. Now for these two pumpkins, I pulled out some decorative paper that I'm going to be using. I'm going to cover this one in this pattern. And then I'm going to be using this pattern for the raised parts on this pumpkin. Okay, so for this pumpkin, just go ahead and turn over your paper, place your pumpkin on the back. Trace and cut out your pumpkin. You're gonna go ahead and lay the paper over and then you can feel where it is, the lifted part. And then I just kind of press down until it makes a crease so that I can see where I need to cut. Okay, so I have my little pieces cut out. Now on my big pumpkin here, I did have a little space over here where it still showed some of the orange pumpkin. So I just took a black Sharpie and covered that space so that it's not noticeable once I apply my paper, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and paint the middle pumpkin and we're also going to paint the trim on this pumpkin. Now I pulled out a granite gray in apple barrel and I've also pulled out pavement. Now I want it a little bit darker than the granite bay so I'm going to add just a little bit of the pavement to make it darker. Okay, so I'm just going to dab my paintbrush into the pavement. Just get a little bit on there and mix it in with the gray. I just want to darken this up just a little bit. Just got to make sure you mix the paints well. I'm just going to go in and paint my pumpkin. I'm also going to paint right around the edges here on the lifted parts. Just in case my paper doesn't completely cover, it will still blend in. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this and I'm going to paint this pumpkin the same color. Okay, so on my big pumpkin here, I'm going to add a little bit of dry brushing and I'm just going to be using the pavement. I have kind of a rough brush. Just tap a little bit into the pavement. Make sure you remove any excess. And then I'm just going to give some curves to my pumpkin just to make it a little bit more three-dimensional and have a little bit more character. Now you don't need a lot. A little will go a long way. Okay, and then when you're happy with it, you wanna go ahead and set that aside. Okay, so while the other two pieces are drying, uh, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with this pumpkin and we're going to attach our paper. And we're going to do that using Matte Mod Podge. Okay, so you want to get a good even coat all over your pumpkin. and smooth it out. Make sure you get any air bubbles out. And then because this is going to go outside, I'm going to put a nice coat of Mod Podge over the top. 
This will help protect it from the moisture of being outside. I don't want the paper to peel off. Okay, once you have a nice even coat over your pumpkin, you're going to want to let that completely dry. And you're gonna do the same thing to the smaller pumpkin. So I have my pumpkins done. I'm really happy with the way both of these came out. I really like the texture. I did the same thing with the pavement on this that I did here. I wanted them to go together. And then on this pumpkin, now that it's nice and dry, to clean up the edges, you want to take your sandpaper and go through, and you just kind of drag down and away if you need to clean anything up. Okay. And then I wanted to add some texture to this as well. So I like using one of these little pouncing brushes. This works really well. Go ahead and dab it into a little bit of the pavement to get it just on the edge. And then I just go around and hit all of the edges. And then with just this edge, go in and add in some of the lines so that it looks like it's a pumpkin and it doesn't look flat, okay? You're also going to want to paint uh, uh, one of these galvanized words welcome in the pavement as well and I found to paint these again it's better to use the pouncing brush and to pounce on okay next thing we're going to do is I want to wrap my stem here with some jute cord Okay, so I got my stem wrapped in my jute, and I'm really happy with that. And now I'm going to make a bow, and I'm using the black and white gingham that I picked up from Dollar Tree. This is 5 eighths of an inch by 9 feet. And you're also going to need a small piece of floral wire. Go ahead and cut it about 3 or 4 inches in length. And that's what your bow looks like. Okay. Now we're also going to be reusing the little metal leaf that came off of the large pumpkin. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue the leaf down and our little bow. Okay, now we're going to attach all of our pumpkins together. And I'm going to be stacking them on top of each other. So this one will go on top of the bottom one. And then this one will go on top of the middle one. Okay. Now to do this, I'm going to use a combination of the uh, Gorilla Wood Glue and Hot Glue. Now I'm going to do the same thing for this one. Now the stakes that I'm going to be using are these. And I picked these up from the 99 cent store. They were $1.99. They are hardwood stakes and they are 35.4 inches in length. Now the reason why I'm going to use these is because I am going to put this outside. I am going to be sticking it into a pot that gets watered. So the hardwood will not warp or bend when it water hits it. 
Uh, you can probably pick something up like this at Lowe's or at Home Depot. You just want to make sure that it is ideal for trees, shrubs, vines, tomato, vegetables. Okay, so I'm going to be using two of these. So go ahead and turn it over. Now the reason why I'm using two stakes is because it gets very windy here and with one stake the uh, pumpkins can twist back and forth. So by using two stakes I won't have that issue where I put it is where it's going to stay. Okay and I'm going to again use hot glue and the wood glue to glue these down and to get them into position. So I'm just going to lay them down, make sure I have enough of the steak, and then I'm just going to mark at the top where they are because I want to make sure they're both the same length. going to go ahead and put some wood glue down. Kind of move it all the way down. And then add some hot glue. Okay, so the stakes are on, they're nice and secure, and then I went ahead and glued on my welcome sign. Now I had some trouble getting this to stay down. Hot glue will not work because this is a freshly painted surface and it does not like to stick to freshly painted surfaces. So I had to use my Gorilla Super Glue. I put it on the back of the sign, I put it in place, and then I had to put books on top of it to get the sign to lay flat long enough for the glue to take. Okay, but I'm all done. I'm really happy with how it turned out. For the pumpkin topiary, you're going to need three of these carvable pumpkins that you can get from the Dollar Tree. And go ahead and remove the stem. There is like a little toothpick in there, so if it doesn't come out with the stem, you can either pull it out or cut it off, either way. I'm going to be using Folk Art Winter White to go ahead and paint my little pumpkin here. Give your pumpkins a good uh, two coats. You want to make sure that you can't see that orange coming through. So I have my base done on my pumpkins and it did take about three coats to get this covered where the orange was not coming through. And I used the whole two ounce bottle to paint all three pumpkins. Now you're going to need some uh, khaki apple barrel paint and some of the jack-o'-lantern apple barrel paint and a little bit of water. So what I've done is I just add a little bit of water and then go ahead and mix in some of the khaki and just a little bit of that orange. Then you're just going to take your pumpkin and where these indentations are, just go ahead and lightly go over them with your brush. Drag all the way from one end to the other. Make sure that you bring it into the center. This will help to accentuate the pumpkin. Okay, so you want to go through and do all of the indentations all the way around on all three pumpkins. I have all the painting done on my pumpkins and I'm really happy with how it came out. 
I really like the colors. Now you're going to need um, one of these wood cut pieces. You need one that's a couple inches long that will look good as a stem. Then go ahead and take a pencil or a dowel rod or whatever and where the hole was where um, the little stem came out or where you used it when you were painting. You want to um, measure the hole and then take that and punch out a hole that's a little bit smaller. Then you'll take your stem and gently press in and twist until it is inside the pumpkin. That's going to be your stem and you only have to do it to one pumpkin because this is the pumpkin that's going to be on the top. Okay, and now you're going to need um, a good mixture of leaves, autumn leaves. The Dollar Tree sells uh, little packages of loose leaves or you can buy uh, some of their autumn fall picks. They also have leaves on them. I pulled this one out. I'm going to be using these berries and these little twigs and the leaves off of these as well as some of these leaves to decorate. And then you're also going to need from the Dollar Tree some of this wired jute so we can make some little tendrils to go on there and I'll show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and make another one of those. Now when you cut the wire you need to go back with some hot glue and hit that end just a little bit because it wants to come unraveled right away. Give it a second to cool down and then go ahead and twist the end. So it looks like that. That way it won't come apart on you. Then you can use a dowel rod or a pencil or anything like that. Go ahead and grab the end and then just kind of do a spiral. You don't want to do it too tight and then gently pull out your pencil or whatever. Okay? And bend it. And go ahead and do it on the other side. Have little corkscrews and then a straight spot. That's where you'll be attaching it. So basically all we're going to do now is go ahead and decorate. You're going to want to go ahead and place uh, some fall leaves. Now you're going to want to add the hot glue to the leaf. Give it a second to cool just a minute and then go ahead and place it on the styrofoam pumpkin. If you place it right on the styrofoam pumpkin and your glue is really hot, you can run the chance of melting the styrofoam. So just choose um, whatever colors that you want, put a little glue down. You want to make sure that the leaves come out far enough so that you're going to see them. And don't be afraid to layer. Okay, once you get a nice layer down of the leaves, then you're going to want to go ahead and take a couple toothpicks 
you'll need a, a four total. Go ahead and stick into the bottom of your pumpkin, the one that you're going to put on top. Some of these toothpicks like that. That's going to help you to attach. Now, when you're putting your pumpkins on, you want to make sure that that the lines don't completely uh, line up. You want them to be a little off. So find your positioning. You're gonna need to help to get those in through those leaves. Okay. Now before you push it all the way down, you do wanna go in and add a good amount of hot glue. And then go ahead and push your pumpkin down. Okay, now you can go back and add in some more leaves. And then you're going to add leaves on the top here as well. Okay, so go ahead and add in some leaves and then go ahead and attach your top pumpkin and then we'll be back. So I have all three of my pumpkins together and I laid down some leaves and then I laid down my tendrils. I just wrapped them around the stem and glued them down so I have them coming out all the way around. So now I'm just going to go in. I'm going to finish filling in with some leaves. Okay, we're all done. I am absolutely in love with this fall DIY. The materials that you're going to be needing are one package of the wooden ornaments, and this is the turkey. You'll need one package of the leaves and one package of the pumpkins. You're also going to need some twine and some raffia. You'll also be needing some of the Waverly antique wax. And then I have several different colors of paint. You can use whatever type of paint you want. I have apple barrel. This is cardinal crimson. Harvest Orange, Burnt Umber, Pale Daffodil, and Holly Branch, which is a nice dark green. So we're going to go ahead and start with the little turkeys. We're going to be using the Burnt Umber. And what I've done is I just put a little bit of the paint inside the cup and I added an equal amount of water and mixed it really well. It's nice and thin. I want to use it more as a stain than an actual paint. That way it looks like a stain. It makes it look very rustic and you can still see the wood and its natural grain. I think it's very pretty. Okay, I have all the turkeys with the burnt umber. They all look beautiful, nicely stained. So the next step, you want to take uh, some of the antique wax by Waverly. Use a very small amount. This stuff goes a long way. A little bit on your brush and then you just want to go through and you want to hit the edges all the way around so it just adds a little bit of dimension and character to go around and to brush it through just around the edge makes it look a little bit weathered and a little bit older Okay, 
on the turkey, I went ahead and antiqued it all the way around the edge. Now I'm, I decided I want to add a little bit more antiquing. So what I'm going to do is right here where the breast of the turkey is, I'm going to use just the side of my little paintbrush here and make some curved marks. Just to add a little bit of dimension again and then right where each of the feathers are I'm going to pull it in just a little bit not all the way again I just want to add a little bit more dimension so it doesn't look flat okay so for the pumpkins we're going to be using the harvest orange and the burnt umber again I still have some um, mix from the turkeys. I'm going to be using that. And then I went ahead and I mixed mostly uh, the harvest orange. I put just a touch of the burnt umber and then again I added water. That way the paint is uh, not super orange and it looks a little bit more distressed again. Hang on, I'm make it a little mess here. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is we're going to do the stems first. And I'm going to be using the burnt umber on those. Your stems nice and brown. And now we're just going to do the body of the pumpkin. We're going to be distressing these as well. <clears throat> we're going to be using the Waverly Antique Wax to go ahead and distress it. Again, just take a small amount going to go ahead and work around the edges first. Of your um, paintbrush there. And I'm going to go in and I want to create again a little bit of some curved lines. Feel that it's a little too dry just add a little bit of water we're gonna go ahead and do the little leaves now I went ahead and mixed the rest of the colors and added water to them as well the first thing that we're going to want to do is use the pale daffodil and the water that's mixed and we want to do a base coat all over the leaf just a very light coat. We're going to be layering the other colors on top. And I'm just going to put a very small amount of color right on the tip of my paintbrush a little bit of that orange. I'm going to use the point of my paintbrush here and I'm just going to put a few little streaks of this orange color around the edges and through the leaf and I'm basically working from the center here out. See that? And with a clean paper towel, just wipe it out. Okay. And I'm going to go in and do the same thing with the green. I'm
going to go in with a little detailed brush into this burnt sienna. Now this again has some water mixed in so it's nice and thin. Take off any excess. And now I'm going to go in and paint the veins of the leaf in. And that leaf is done. All the little mixed colors make it look like a nice fall leaf. All the leaves are done and dried. Now we're going to go ahead and distress them with the antique wax again. Very pretty. I'm going to go ahead and do this to the rest of the leaves and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so all of our pieces are done and dried. Now I'm going to make some little bows to put on each of the pieces. Uh, on to the pumpkin, I'm using the dark brown raffia. I made a nice little bow. We're going to glue those right on down underneath the hole. Now I'm going to use the red raffia and make a bow for the leaf. So I'll show you how to do that. I take two pieces of the raffia and then I just tie a normal bow. I start with a knot. And then tie it like you would tie your shoelaces. Pull the ends back through until you get the right size of loops that you want. So once you got your little bow the size that you like, go ahead and cut the ends off and cut the tails however long that you want. You have a nice little red bow and that's going to go right underneath the leaf. Now on the turkeys, I'm going to do a little twine bow. Those are pretty easy as well. You just want to cut a piece about three inches. That's what you're going to use to tie it together. Now I like the width of about three fingers. So I just um, wrap it around till I have like three loops around my three fingers. Pull it together, cut the end off, and then the shorter piece, we're just going to tie it in the middle. You can cut your tails however short you want them, and we'll be gluing this guy right underneath the turkey. Everything is all done. I have it all stringed onto the jute twine. What I did was uh, go ahead and tie a little loop on the end. That'll hook one side. I didn't tie one on the other because I don't know exactly how long I'm going to need it or where I'm going to hang it. But doesn't that look really nice together? Well, I hope you enjoyed my 10 favorite fall DIYs. I hope this inspires you to get creating for the fall season. Thanks so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure to see you. If you enjoy craft tutorials and hauls, you're going to want to check out these other videos. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.